So we'll begin 1726.37, and that's it. Page 6, line 21, where Noah Walton, what's up, man? Could we maybe get lights, Judge, so this is not very bright? Some of the lights here. That's it in the next couple of days. But I understand he's only about the gun. I don't know who shot him. I'll put that on my life. I'm not, I wouldn't mind you right here right now. I don't know who did it. I would never have ever heard a day in my life. I had that gun because I was scared about what I saw. I know you don't believe me. You probably don't either. Whatever. I'm telling you. I mean, I don't believe that, but I. I believe you know that you did shoot him because that's a big step. Uh, 100,000, 10%. You never would have that, you know. I would hurt myself if I was there, and I'll try to do that. If the cops talk to you again for any reason, I talked to an attorney today, told him everything. I told him that you guys were high drunk and tripping because it's all disclosed. He's not allowed to tell anyone about that. He's not allowed to be. He straight told me, he said, they can't get in any legal trouble. Mm -hmm. You can't go, you can't get arrested upon confession. And he said, if the absolute worst came to worst, they'd be put in handcuffs and put in a cell for one night and then let out the next day because they did nothing illegal. Like they wouldn't find any else in your system. Mm -hmm. So, well, they can't, I don't think they can get arrested for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if they drug tested you for pot, you need this, you know. You have to have an army to arrested. What I'm saying is, is if I have to go to court in front of a grand jury or anything, and you have to testify, or if the cops want to talk to you again, whenever you talk to them, just feel like you're too afraid to tell them that you were on acid because you thought you were going to get in trouble. No, that's true. I've never been to that. Yeah. yeah, and if anything about that gun, just say, I must have misunderstood or something because I was tripping balls. I really don't know what was going on. He was just. That Riley was just complaining to me about some stuff. I guess I thought I heard something about a gun. And his grandfather thinking he took it, you know. More than that, I was scared as fuck. I just take it to come and talk to me. Yeah. Just, as long as you tell them that you were, if you tell them you're unhealthy, you were drunk, and you're hot, your mind was altered, whatever statement you give them wasn't a straightforward answer. Because your mind wasn't. Even if it was, they can't like, convict you based on that, right? No, if they could, they would have arrested them already. But they're saying that they found a ground, a misfed ground, which means you can't come back and it flies out. They had to explain it to you. Single ground. Yes. They said they found a single hollow tip ground, which is the hollow point where it doesn't have the yeah. sound ball. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Those are the same rounds our grandfather uses. Mm -hmm. They said they find the gun and it matches it, which it wouldn't, because unless so hot to why it is in the gun. Just it just needs to be gone. For whatever reason, just it just needs to be gone. Man, but that sounds like you're like your ticket. Like that sounds like your cold hard proof. Like other than that it's it's he said, she said. That sounds like you're like but a bullet can fit in any normal law. Oh, that's true, that's true. I mean, I don't know anything about that. I, I didn't know that. They, they tried to learn. They tried to learn about that. Is specifically to the, like, CRA of the gun. You know what I mean? Any bullet you buy can be put in any kind of It's, it's just, just a lot of okay. And they tried to learn to me last night when they interrogated they inter me for two and a half hours. I told them all the truth, like, where I was, stuff like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I was here until 11. I left. I told him where I went, went to go talk to him up. Then I went and came back here and I called you, talked to you about my roommate. I already told my roommate, I said, if the cops ask you anything, tell them exactly what you asked me about the rifle. He said, okay, what's going on? I was like, just tell them the truth. And I told the cops the same thing, that my roommate asked you and you were the first person I got on the phone with. So I was going back to Knoxville and I just asked you. So, that's pretty much all of it. They, they lied to me in the interrogation room saying, because the attorney said that they'll, they'll do that. They'll, they'll lie to you trying to get you to confess something that you, you know, that they were trying to get out of you. They straight up said, like, 
we found this guy around uh, in the back of her yard with two shots discharged in her house, like through a wall. They said they found my grandfather's fingerprint on one of the bullets. But if they had actually found a fingerprint, he would be in custody. You don't just find a fingerprint in an emergency and not take the person's fingerprint that you found. That's what the attorney said, just straight up. How do they know? Like, is it, so like, you grandpa would already have to be in the system, like, would it make any sense, like, if you're going to have to have it? They have to have his fingerprints. They didn't find this because the gun he bought, to them. So he had to get fingerprints, they swabbed them. But if they would found a gun at a, at a crime scene for, for murder, and they found any evidence with anybody's DNA to it, they would talk to them first. So they obviously lied to me, trying to get something out of it, because they think that I need my grandfather's gun to shoot up in the house. Like I said, I'm not sure I'm telling the truth. Like, like I said, I'm telling the truth. I mean, I was fucked up. That was the one thing that I didn't say last time I was fucked up. Yeah, I didn't say I was fucked up. If you just told me that you were on acid, high, and drunk, and just you didn't really understand what I was saying, you just kind of went along with it. I just thought I was the only sober person here. And I guess I'll talk to Isaac because Isaac's going to be sketchy about that too, telling the cops that he's on drugs, but. I'll talk to him another time. But if two of you say that you're doing it, and he says he doesn't, then obviously there's going to be altercation, and he's going to have to eventually get to it. But, yeah, just just do that. Because right now, I mean, they don't know anything, because if they did, I would be in jail right now. And also, though, his parents are crazy, too, like, so they're going to come after you. Like, every, everybody that is friends with her that doesn't like me because of, like, our past or whatever, they've said she killed herself, like, she shot herself because of me, or that I shot her, or that, like, and then there's a whole other, like, category of blame where they, some people that understood the situation said she killed herself because of me and her parents, or she just killed herself because of her parents. But she didn't kill herself. She did. Nobody knows that but me and you two and my grandparents. They haven't released that thing by people just make up shit because they want me to be cool. How did they work? How did how did how did they tell you? Did they tell you? Like the the detective you talked to? I asked them at the very beginning of the interrogation, I said, Do you guys know anything about how she died? And they said no. But then later on, when all they called me in there to do, I went in there voluntarily, they said they wanted to get a timeline of the weekend, like where I was, what I was doing told them every single bit of the honest truth, where I was every moment of the weekend, to my best knowledge, who I was with. I said Saturday, I didn't remember how long you stayed. I said, I'm pretty sure uh, Alex showed up for a little bit, like he was there for a little bit, I'm not sure how long you stayed. I know Isaac was there with the girl, and I didn't say her name, so you should say with the girl. They came for a long time too, but for the majority, I know I, I stayed here Saturday night. Saturday night? Yes, I spent the night. I told him that. I mean, I, I did everything. Like, I told him to the best of my knowledge with everything. And then near the end of the, like, Friday, because, because, and Friday, you said he was with me right after, like, he said you got to get or whatever. So yeah. Friday night? Yeah. I thought that was really funny. I, st- I must have stayed Saturday, too, because when I woke up in the morning, that's when I had to go. I left early from your house, because you were still asleep. And I went out to Seth's house, and that's when Bill called me and said some dude was outside the house. I didn't know about looking up ahead, but he called me on a car and FaceTime, some dude dressed in black was like trying to get in the house. Wait, 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 wait. You, you told me that when you put in the car? Yeah, that happened before. Yeah, that happened Sunday morning. That happened. No, you, you told me that on Saturday night. I thought you got to get out of the yard, dropped it off, like, in the yard. No, no, no. In Sarah's seat, you got to wear it in Okay, so there's the next time. That yeah. Changed. Now, the reason I'm telling you guys about don't be afraid to tell whoever talks to you next that you're on acid and you're not really sure what you got. You can't be the victim of that. Exactly. Well, I don't. Okay. 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 My attorney said he's going to hire a private investigator, and he said he's going to talk to you guys. The investigator is. Like, 100%. He's going to, like, I don't know if he'll be on the phone or in person. Just be like, because he, he apparently he, he was uh, he was big, the attorney said he was big in a drug bust in the 70s. 
not like drug bust, but like interrogating, like interrogating people and like looking into stuff that have to do with like psychedelics and pot and stuff like that. Just a bunch of different like cocaine, yeah. big drug guy. Okay. So he said, when I told the attorney about what you guys are on, he was like, if they don't want to tell the honest truth, the attorney told me to come talk to you guys. Mm-hmm. He said, give them a heads up about because, yeah, that that would be like that would no one avoid all of our stories. That's what I'm saying. I guess it's not really, but like I guess it's it's not, they can't they can't use that as any evidence. They could use it as evidence before Yeah, that's what people say. Yeah, because yeah. they don't have proof. But I'm just saying, like it would just be less of a reason for them to follow through. It would be like you're you were in an altered state of mind. You couldn't have known exactly what you were saying. Like it couldn't have been factual evidence. So he's 100% going to talk to you. I just don't know when. I mean, you can do it. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm sorry about you, dog. I can't. I really. I want to be so upset, and I can't because I'm more worried about getting arrested and putting away from murder that I didn't commit. Literally couldn't even go to her camera live visual line because it would have been more focused on me. Debbie Ray is a bitch. She's a bitch. Like, I've got all these other people so tweet me about. You, did you see how my tweet went nationwide? Oh, you're, yeah. Yeah, like, like over like 2,000 favorites or whatever, and like a bunch of fucking. Well, Nathan Sams, because he's been so fucking in love with him since he got down second grade and she's never wanted him decided that he was going to subtweet me and say, if you guys actually knew what happened, you'd be disgusted. Like, why would I ever type something out and put every single negative in there with the positives when someone just passed away? Why would I say, we got really mad at each other a lot because her parents were awful to us and we treated each other like shit a bunch because her parents were supposed to be in a relationship? Why in the world would I put that in there? Why not just focus on the positives of somebody that just passed away when you were with them for two years? Like, in what, I, what I typed out and said, like, how much I love her, like, how every experience we had, whenever it's real and all that kind of stuff. He was saying, if you guys, like, all these people that didn't know this, the whole situation, like, all the friends do, mm-hmm. but, like, if you knew what really looked like, what went down, you'd be disgusted with yourself. About how you guys had kind of a bad relationship. Yeah. But why would I, why would I, like, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, why? Question of myself, uh, <laughs> How? I don't know you're saying, why would I? Yeah, I'm saying, like, I typed out, like, like a heartfelt, like, everything positive about a relationship. Mm-hmm. Why would I tell all the people about all the negatives, too, when somebody just passed away? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I see what you mean. Like, why would I let you know? There's no reason. There's no reason. To, yeah. I mean, that's stuff that we don't know that for. And everybody at this bitch of mine was like, they were all talking about me saying, well, I showed it. That's really what everybody thinks. I mean, except for people that actually know me and don't hate me. Like, I called Chance and I, I wanted to know how the bitch went. He said it was good, like, he's crying on the phone. And I was like, or he was like, um, I know you can do it, man. I had to get in a bunch of people's faces and not because they kept saying a bunch of shit about it. I just told him to back off. Tyler George did the same thing. Cody even called me. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, first of all, I wouldn't hurt her and never call out that I was kidding. Someone that I know that much. I couldn't, I couldn't even bring myself to murder somebody just for him. There's no...
she, uh, what really, really gets to me is, is that she actually got shot through the wall. Like, the police officers didn't obviously mean to let me know, but they did. Mm-hmm. If that was at 3 in the morning, and somebody from the neighborhood watch of Sturkey called in gunshots at 3 in the morning, but the parents didn't wake up in the room literally 20 feet away. And then another thing, well, I don't know if that's true, because that's all up to her parents as far as what they want to release. Like, it's entirely up to them. Entirely. Yeah. Well, they also, well, they, they, they didn't even have to really find her to on the phone. Like, honestly, she could have gone upstairs, like, and found her immediately. But it was a she seemed to be like, um, just one story out. Uh, well, yeah, she would have gone. I don't know why I said that. Yeah. She, she but, like, they said they, but the thing was, the ambulance wasn't even there for six months. Like, they didn't call. And the thing is, is they would have automatically ruled out any kind of suicide. Or, I mean, not ruled it out, but, like, if she would have got shot through the wall, you don't just get shot and die instantly unless you get hit in the throat or in the head. Yeah. Unless she got shot directly in the heart. But still, even that, like, you're going to feel that and wake up and be able to try and, like, crawl out of your bed. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. Like, I still don't understand how she died. I don't either, but if she like, actually got shot through the wall, then she... Would like say it hits her in the stomach. Say somebody shot her in the wall, hit her in the stomach. She's gonna, she's going to wake up from that. You don't just get shot and just lay there. Yeah, I don't see how she wouldn't scream or something like anything. And she just lay there. Unless it was just like a ridiculous shot. If it hit her in the head, then they would have saw that. Well, they did. They did. Yeah. You don't know. You didn't see that. that. They could have walked in and seen her just. Uh, well, it was because it was a, it was a murder investigation from. Early that morning. As far as I know, like, they never know. Like, they always don't know anything about, about, about how she was found or when she was found. Because whatever she was, yeah, exactly. exactly. What they they always knew it was a homicide. Could not be true. They knew it was a homicide from the first second because they put Hannah McDonald and Sarah Seaton in protective custody. You serious? Yeah. According to whoever. According to Hannah McDonald. Who heard the talk? How would they put them in protective custody? I don't know, man. Because they knew it was a homicide. Yeah, but why would they have seen the other thing like the day before? Um, just because I guess they were just affiliated. The investigator wants to talk to Sarah too. Really? The investigator? Yeah. Because the attorney was like, who was, who was somebody that didn't look that over to? And I was like, mm-hmm. and he was like, who's the next person she thought it was? I was like, probably Sarah. And he said, well, I'm not let him know that he needs to talk to her about any community she might have or anything like that. But, but I'm trusting you guys, like, with my life, because, I mean, this is seven years in jail if I get convicted of something I didn't do. And are you guys, are you busy right now? Are you guys doing anything? Not really. It was not really. Actually, we'll go later, but the power is here. I don't know right here. Well, can we get the gloves? Because I, I need to get rid of them. I'm going to throw it in the water. I'm going to throw it in the water. I'll try to get the water with like rocks and shit. I can't get it back. Well, yeah, we can do a beer bottle with the Sure. We can go on that. The smaller ledge that really looks out of the water. You know what I'm talking about. I'm like, I'm there. Yeah. And if I go with enough sports, I know it's fair. You guys don't have to come with me if you don't want to. I mean, I'm not too bad, man. I just need to cry to see that. If it goes, if it's in the Tennessee River, they will never find it. Well, you guys are going to have to come with me if you don't want to. I mean, I'm not too bad, man. I just need to cry to see that. If it goes, if it's in the Tennessee River, they will never find it. I know that much. And how I know it wasn't my grandfather's gun, his, his magazine had. He had five shots in total when I first shot it. Still has five shots in it. There's no way he had it the whole time. That's the thing. Not you lost it. That's the thing. But if I, ever, if I actually gave him that gun, that's like, yeah, maybe it's 50 50. It may give them reason to say, okay, the fingerprints on this gun and this bullet don't match. Cool. But at the same time, they could have never had fingerprints in the first place and be like, oh, and it's just this bullet. This like, walks into super common. Yeah, like, oh, this, 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 or this bullet fits in this magazine, this magazine fits in this gun. Hey, if we shoot this ball, it does the same thing with the ballistic bullet. Yeah. So that's why I just want to eliminate that from the equation as a whole. 
So you are watching a video recording of Riley Gall with his friends after Emma Walker, his girlfriend, was murdered. He is telling them that they should essentially lie to the police. That if they ask, if the police are to ask about the gun, they should just say that they didn't know about it and tell the police that they were drunk or high and had an altered mind and they won't get in trouble. Let's go back to the video. Like they, they, got, they got all the facts they needed about the timeline, which is what they called me in for voluntarily. They read me my notes and everything. And then they started getting all the other stuff, like, where's your grandfather's gun? We know you have it. Where's that? And I was like, I don't have the gun. And then they were like, they got into all that stuff. And um, I talked to my attorney today, and I... Six, six foot, like, as tall as you probably. 
I gave them my notes. They now have that. They can look at every text, every call, every location out there. Like, I knew that was going to happen, so they had to feel I'm not afraid of what they thought. They conceived that she called me, however early it was, Sunday morning. Sunday morning? Saturday or Sunday. I think it was, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You told me my time on the spot. She was like, she texted me and said, like,
this is the first thing I got like when I got back to it. I just got in there and I was like, I think we like there's like some some black sweatpants, some white some dishwasher. At this point, Judge, I'd like to fast forward the publication of it to the closer to the end. Uh, the arrest is at 1906. I'd like to put, do, go to 1858 without objection, unless there's other publication. Where was that? Where was that? That's no. I don't have a page and line number. But Line 26. <clears throat> Sorry, we're at page 46, line 7 is where we're picking up. Page 46, line 7. And we have about six minutes.
Giro.
that's all we intend to publish, Judge. Um, but the full audio will be in the exhibit. And were you all close growing up? Yeah, I was like pretty good friends. We got close to in high school for sure. You didn't play football? Yes, no, sir. And were you always, your friend group always, Noah and um, um, Isaac? Yep. Okay. Was that your all's friend group throughout? Was probably always a part of that friend group, or did that happen sometime in high school? Mm, we were always together. Okay. Um, talk a little bit about um, you, you said during your uh, direct examination uh, a little bit earlier today that I think you st were talking about that you always knew Riley or you, you knew Riley was um, struggling with a lot of stuff. He was st uh, stressed and depressed. That's what they said. Okay. And is that true? Yes. Okay. And, and what time period are you referencing when you say that he was uh, stressed and depressed? Um, he always had issues dealing with his emotions, for sure. Okay. It definitely got worse in high school. His, his emotions got worse in high school? It definitely got worse in high school. Was that before or after he and Emma started dating? Before. Okay. How old were you in, in November of 2016? Uh, 18, 19. Okay. So you and Riley the same age? You're about to turn 19. Okay. And do you own any firearms? Yes, sir. You ever shot any firearms? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'll shot one of them. You would know? Yeah. What kind of firearms y'all shoot? Uh, he, uh, soon after us, uh, kind of hit his head, he went out and bought a, uh, I'm not for sure exactly what it is. It's like a, it's like a assault rifle kind of thing. He went and, to the range. An assault rifle? Yeah. Did you play this Call of Duty game too over at Noah's? Yeah, we played a lot of Call of Duty games. You, you did as well? Yes. Okay. Now, as I understand it, you were not at Noah's on Friday night the 18th, but you were over there the Saturday night the 19th. Yes, sir. And at that time, was Riley still, according to your testimony, still dealing with uh, being stressed and being depressed? Yeah, it got him way worse through the, that last summer that he went through. The sum, his, after he graduated that summer? That summer, yeah. Okay, so that would have been the summer of 2016? Yeah, our friend group went through like a lot of weird stuff. I beg your um, pardon? Um, well, Isaac, we, did, we dealt with a lot of like weird stuff that kind of happened over the summer with Riley, and it kind of had a lot of effect on him. What kinds of things had a lot of effect on him during the summer? Well, uh, I don't know, him and him were breaking up, and then he also kind of like had a little obsessive things with uh, another friend of ours, Emily Wise, and then that was, got really weird. Okay. We kind of, probably kind of distanced himself from a lot of the parts of the friend group after that. From your friend group? Um, some parts of it, yes. Right. And, um, did you, did, would you agree that his and Emma's relationship was on and off again for the duration of their two-year relationship? To my knowledge, yes. Okay. Now, Saturday night, I think you said that he was, uh, you had pulled him off to the side to talk to him, or he was off to himself and you went to talk to him, something to that effect? Uh, yeah, I could just tell that he was, you know, kind of getting cold and He just, you know, he would kind of do it, and sometimes, just if you tell he was wanting to talk, I kind of mean, like, Really low key scene. It's like I saw him that, and I would kind of pull him aside and go on to talk to him one on one. And if he would take me to the gas station, okay. And um, what was it about you all before, about Riley before you all left to go to the gas station that concerned you? I mean, what what was your concern for Riley? I was just there. I mean, I just told my mannerisms and how he was talking to me. He was doing something that I had not heard the story from him, but I had heard the story from. Isaac about the kidnapping. So okay. I just wanted to hear him. Just, no. you, didn't, you didn't believe the story about the kidnapping? No. Okay. So why did you want to hear that story? To make sure Riley was okay. Even though you didn't believe the story? No. I'm sorry, you, you want to make sure he was okay of a kidnapping that you didn't believe, is what I understand. You're, I didn't believe the kidnapping, though. I knew he wasn't okay. I see. You, were, you weren't concerned about 
his, him being kidnapped, you were concerned about him coming up with the story, I guess, of being kidnapped. Yeah, I'm worried. I, I was worried about him being mainly suicidal, yes, sir. Okay. Because he threatened me. He said it, but he said that a lot in our friend group. And when he had kids, he said threatened suicide a lot. Riley had threatened suicide a lot in your house friend group? Yeah. All right. And so it was Saturday night that you first uh, saw him with a gun? Yes, sir. And you, you handled that firearm? Yes, sir. Did that make you nervous at all handling that firearm? No. Did you give it back to him? Yeah. Okay. So you understood he was suffering from depression and, and stress and was suicidal and you gave him this handgun back? Yeah. Does that make a lot of sense? To you now? Yes, sir. Did it make a lot of sense to you then? Yes. I mean, like, I mean, he was a grown man. I thought he was dealing with some stuff. Okay. With my life so you're concerned with his stress and depression, and you give him a firearm back. Did you know it was loaded? I knew he had it, yeah. Okay. You didn't know if it was loaded or not? I didn't know, but I think he did say, he mentioned that he didn't know if it was loaded or not, and not to pull trigger. I don't remember if the clip was in here or not. Did it occur to you that, that he might use that gun to hurt himself? Uh, yeah, that was my first concern. But in, in a way, Riley threatened suicide, but I also never thought he would. I don't think he would ever commit suicide. Uh, all the other yeah. times that he had threatened suicide, did you ever know him to have a gun? No, sir. Did you ever know him to know anything about a gun? No, to my knowledge. Okay, but this time you know he's talking about suicide and he's got a gun. Yeah. That's a little, little more significant, isn't it, Mr. McCarty? I mean, you know, really, I mean, still, I look, felt like at the time that I knew Riley well enough that I don't think that he would take his own life. Most of the things that he did, I saw as a cry for help, and that's what I was trying to do. I got you. I think, and in, in, you interviewed a couple of times, I think, with law enforcement after all these events, did you not? Yes. Okay. And in one of those uh, interviews, um, you talked a little bit about the fact that you were not, I think you said you were not personally fearful of Riley. Do you remember saying that? Sounds like something I would say. Okay. And that's true. You were not personally fearful of Riley. Yes. You, you did not fear that he would hurt you that night. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry? Yeah, I did not fear that he would hurt me personally. Right. I had, I had fears that he would use like, other things. There was a time when a lot of things was going on that I saw him get really aggressive so so is it your testimony that you were worried about other people's safety uh, when you handed in this gun back on September the 19th on that Saturday or November the 19th that Saturday Can you give me that question? yeah you, you were you were worried about other people's safety uh, I had been fired. on November the 19th when you handed in that gun back were you worried no. You weren't worried about him hurting anybody else? No, I wasn't. Okay. Should have been. Hindsight's twenty twenty, isn't it? Is that a yes? Yes. And you told um, Isaac and you told Noah about uh, Riley having this gun? Saturday night, yeah, after Riley had left. And you all had a, had a discussion about what to do or what not to do? Yes, sir. And one of the things you didn't do was call law enforcement? Yes, sir. You, you, you knew Jimmy Walker? Uh, no, not personally. Okay. You didn't know his grandfather, James Walker? Not personally. You knew Seth Donlan? Yes. Okay. You didn't contact Seth Donlan? Yes, sir. When you knew he had this gun? No, sir. You, did you know Jill and Mark Walker? No, sir. Do you think that, that you were being responsible at that time regarding this, you knowing him had a gun and he was suicidal in this depressed state? In hindsight, no, sir. At the time you thought you were being responsible? Um. Sure. Yes. Okay. And how old were you then? 18? Yeah. 
You'd agree with me you're more responsible today than you were then? I like think so. I think you called it, you all talked about maybe doing an intervention. When were you planning to do this intervention? Um, we can put a set date on it. It was something that we talked about and thought was necessary. You, I'm sorry, you talked about and thought was necessary? Yes. And did you and, and Noah and Isaac have contact on Sunday? Yes. You had a cell phone at that time, correct? Yes. And Noah had a cell phone at that time? Yes. And Isaac had a cell phone at that time? Yes. And none of you called anybody on that day about what you had seen the night before and Riley having this gun? So Riley, well, he was a different that night compared to Saturday night. He did seem completely different. He wasn't moping and he wasn't like begging, like asking for that attention. Like, like he wasn't doing what I thought was a cry for help before. And, uh, now, it didn't cross my mind, honestly, it seemed like we were moving forward. You, you confronted and talked to Riley about the gun on Sunday? No, not on Sunday, it's because he didn't, he seemed drastically different from how he was on Saturday. So what was the time difference between when you saw him with the gun on Saturday night and the time you saw him on Sunday? Um, I think all, it's like around, almost 24 hours, it's like Saturday night, Sunday night. You didn't say, hey, man, how you doing? What's going on? You, you, you still got that gun, anything like that? I mean, we asked him what he's doing, of course, but I mean, he's good. He said he's doing good. And I wasn't going to bring it up in front of Noah and Ozzy because he asked me not to tell them. But you could have said, hey, let's go get a Dr. Pepper at Pilot. Could you not? I could have, yes. The same thing you did Saturday night. Yes, sir. There was a bunch of other things you could have done to pull Riley aside, correct? Well, I think I could have done. I'm sorry? I think I could have done. Do you think it was responsible of you not to do anything? Objection to the argumentative judge. He's asked it about whether or not it's responsible. That's an argument, not a question. I think it's that's a fair question. He's already talked about the He's same thing on Saturday night. About it, whether or not it's on Saturday night. Not. He's shipped, trying to shift blame to the witness. No, I'm not trying to shift blame to the witness. It's argumentative. We, we talked about Saturday night, Judge. This is we're talking about Sunday at this point. What could you have done to be responsible about this information you had on Sunday? Can you repeat the question? What could you have done to be responsible about this information that you had on Sunday? Um, in hindsight, I guess I could have contacted Riley Goss, parental figures, and the other one. Or even just, I guess, called an open forum with all his friends there Sunday night. But you didn't. You didn't feel like on Sunday night that he was a threat to himself. He did seem drastically different from Saturday. And you didn't think that on Sunday night that Riley was a threat to anybody else? He, no, he seems just like a regular day. Like a regular day? Yeah. When you say regular, you still refer to this stressed and depressed. Um, no, I mean, like, the youth I spent with him, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like all the time. We definitely did have the spells. You didn't find out about how Emma died until uh, you started talking to law enforcement? Yes, sir. And you started talking to them on the day she passed away? So I knew of the, of the law enforcement got yes, the day of. And do you recall calling James Hurst early uh, in the morning on November 22nd? Yes. Do you remember what you told 
Detective Hurst about the gun? Uh, 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 I don't know if I thought I talked to uh, a detective Monday night, and uh, that's when I told him that we were like he, the plan was to dispose of it Tuesday. Then, yeah. So you think it was late Monday night on the 21st? Yeah, okay, well, yeah I guess it would have taken me Tuesday, yeah. So. So late Monday night, early Tuesday morning, yes. somewhere in that time frame, you called law enforcement. You called Detective Hurst. I did, yes. I did you, do you remember what you told him? Uh, as, I, as I said, uh, just that Riley was comfortable getting rid of the murder weapon in with my, in my residence. Is that something that they need to know? Have you reviewed the recording of that that conversation? With, uh, what do you mean? The recording you, of the phone call? Do you know? Yes. No, I have not heard that actually. So you don't recall telling law enforcement that you that you told Riley that, or when as part of that conversation that he was talking about the gun and that you told Riley that you were scared that he was going to get in trouble and that we need to do something with it. You know, um, I mean, no, he in the driveway he asked me if he was going to throw it in the river, and honestly, I was kind of, for lack of a better word, bullshitting once I figured out the truth. You bullshitting Detective Hurst? No. Okay, so you were straight with Detective Hurst? I was bullshitting my legal. Right, but in the phone conversation, you were straight with Detective Hurst? Always. Do you agree that you told Detective Hurst that you told Riley that we need to get rid of the guns? Mm -hmm. I mean, again, that's what it says. That sounds like something I'd say. That you told Riley we need he, he cried, right? It wasn't like I brought up that issue. That Who's that? But what? Who, he pried it. It wasn't like you brought up that issue. What reference, what conversation are you talking about? Um, I'm talking about the conversation we had Monday, like soon after when I left Texas Roadhouse, whenever I asked him if he still had the gun, and then I drew my own conclusions and uh, realized he didn't have the gun and confronted him about it again. And that's when he told me that he had to get rid of it and he wanted me to throw, help him throw it in the river. And but that's not what you told Detective Hurst. Is it not? Would you like to hear what you told Detective Hurst? Sure. And you're listening to Alex McCarty. He is the defendant's friend, and he testified about what happened after the fact that he was notified by the defendant, William Riley Gall, that he had a gun, that it was his grandfather's gun. Um, Gall and a bunch of his friends went to go dispose of the gun, but the friends had already gone to police. They had already wired themselves up. And so they recorded the whole episode of them going to dispose of the gun. So they captured the cover-up. And then what happened is they were eventually pulled over by the police before they could dispose of this gun. So what you're seeing now is Alex McCarty, the defendant's friend, after he provided his testimony, he's now being cross-examined by the defense. And the defense attorney is basically asking him, sort of questioning whether he could have been more responsible and gotten the information to the police sooner. So bringing this uh, witness under questioning and maybe trying to attack his credibility, though I don't think it's very effective uh, because he seems to be just an innocent bystander who actually did the right thing. A lot of the friends went to the police, notified the authorities, cooperated with the authorities. So how do you make somebody like that look bad? We are waiting now for, it looks like the attorneys are reviewing some stuff. There's been audio in and out, so maybe they're having some technical difficulties in replaying some more of that. Let's listen in and see what's going on. Now, you see this date right here, November 22, 2016 at 2.50, 46 a.m.? Yeah, I don't know if you agree with me that that's the properties of this particular file we're looking at. Today. Yes, sir. I'm out the gun, I'm holding on to the shed, and he's gonna get shot. 
You're saying that what you just listened to was misleading? No, oh, yeah, let me clarify. I was gonna, by the way that the uh, video comes across, it seems like I was prompting Riley to like get rid of the gun in my presence or whatever. And it wasn't, it was already a thing way before 3 a.m. Well, it was after this phone conversation you went in, went in that morning with uh, Detective Hurst and Detective Merritt? Yes. The Sheriff's Office here? Yeah, those other detectives. You see Detective Mayor here in the courtroom? Yes, sir. Okay. That's him sit, sitting at the defense or the state's table, right? Yes, sir. And it was at that point that they gave you a fob, this fob video that we've been looking at? Yes, sir. Okay. And then you meet up with Riley and Noah over at Noah's? Uh, no, I uh, I talked to him about me being able to go with Noah as well. The good I I mean, I and imagine going through without them. So he really kind of made the situation a lot more casual. My point is, is at some point in that day, you and Noah got together with Riley, correct? On Tuesday, yes. Okay. We know we worked together the, that night. We were at Emily Wise's house. Had, was, you all had the fob, right? Yes, sir. We just watched a video of you all at Noah's house. Yes, sir. And you drove your car to Cess, right? Yes, sir. And you drove it from Cess to Cookout, right? Yes, sir. Drove from Cookout to Pilot. Yes, sir. Drove from Pilot to um, to the Bluffs. Yes, sir. And to get into the Bluffs, you had to put in a code to get in there? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, sir. And you put that code in? Yeah, I used to deliver for uh, Insomnia Cookies on the strip. I didn't mind it still working there at the time. So I knew all the passwords for all the gates and stuff. You talked about um, the fact that you felt like it was a little odd that that you um, touched the gun on the night that Riley was or the night morning that Riley was arrested. Is that right? Yeah, and looking back on it, I mean, I definitely did prompt it. Uh, I remember reading over and looking at the video. My train thought at the time was that I didn't want Riley to have it when the of the police pulled up. And you know, whenever they did, he, he grabbed it out of my hand. So you actually, you, you agree with me now that that after watching the video, that you actually prompted Riley to hand you the gun. Yeah, 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 it definitely seemed that way. That wasn't my knowledge like it. That's definitely how it was, because I heard it. And, and that's, that just goes along with me just trying to uh, get the situation as casual, like it was not me wearing a wire and helping him. And that's not the impression you gave during your rec examination, correct? No, what do you mean? Well, you sort of made it seem a little bizarre or odd that you actually touched the gun. Right yeah, I, didn't, I didn't remember it until I saw the video. And then, yeah. I thought you said you went over this transcript with Mr. Allen and, and, you, uh, and you helped edit it and make sure it was correct. Yeah, I have. It's a very complex situation with a lot of things. That's all I've got. Thank you. Can we Thank you. Call Noah Walton. We need a break, Judge, or is it?
Go ahead and state your full name and introduce yourself to the jury, if you would. Go ahead, Anthony Walton. And Mr. Walton, you live here in Knoxville. Yes, sir. And what is your address? 1813 Long Crest Drive. Sir. What I'm handing you has been marked for identifiable. It's actually an exhibit. It's in evidence. Exhibit number three, an area of map. You just said your address is 1813 Long Crest. Yes, sir. And do you see Long Crest on that map? Yes, sir. All right. If you would, Mr. Walt, just put your initials next to your address, NW. How long have you lived there at Long Crest? Uh, two years ago, so eight years ago. Okay. So for six years you lived there with your parents? Yes, sir. And uh, the last two years you've lived by yourself? Yes. Um, and your parents, where did they go to? Almost two years, uh, North Carolina. Okay, so when you were in high school, were, were your parents still there? Yeah. All right, but when you graduated from high school, what, what did you do? What was your uh, plan as far as what you were doing next? Uh, I was staying in Knoxville to go to college at UT, and I'd already made up my decision before they made their decision to move, so I was staying there, and they were leaving regardless. Um, and they're actually generous enough to let me stay at the house. And so that's wonderful. Okay. And you are a UT student now? Yes, sir. What is your, what are you majoring in? Uh, nuclear engineering. Okay. And uh, were you enrolled in the program as a freshman in the fall of 2016? Yeah. You recognize a fellow seated at the table over there in the white golf shirt? Yes, sir. Who is that? Bradley Gong. How do you know him? Um, we've been friends for, uh, we're friends. Very close friend for the last senior year of high school. Um, and I'd known him. We'd gone to school together for four years in high school. Okay. And, and we came really close in senior year. And so your friendship with him, is that is, is there a group of you that are uh, particularly tight? Definitely, definitely. Who, um, who are the members of your group? Uh, it would be me, Robin, uh, Alex McCarty, Isaac Ewers, Emily Wise, sometimes. Um, that was the core group. Okay, and the jury's already heard that you you were kind of the hangout house where your friends would come. Yes, sir. Okay, and sometimes you play Xbox or PlayStation to till the wee hours of the night. Yes, sir. And Riley was part of that. Yes, sir. Was Riley also? Did he have a girlfriend in the fall of 2016? Yes, sir. Did you know her? I knew of her. I didn't know her very well. Okay. I her maybe once. What was her name? Emma. Uh, did you know anything about Emma? where she lived or who her parents were or anything like that? No, I knew that she went to our high school. She lived there. That was it. Uh, did you know her in high school? Not personally. Okay. Would you have recognized her on the street if you saw her? Yes. Okay. Probably. And um, in the fall of 2016, did, were you aware of, of, of what the status of their relationship was? Uh, through what Riley told me. Told me. And what, what, did you, what did you become aware of was happening with their relationship? Uh, that is in November of 2016. Uh, they've been together for a while before that, but it was tumultuous and they had a lot of issues uh, between each other, between outside agents. Um, yeah. Okay. And do you, what, what did you understand the status of the relationship was, particularly in November of 2016? Uh, they had a lot of issues at that point, um, and I believe that they were in the process of separating. Um, at least from what Riley has told me, uh, they were in the process of separating, and he was trying to get her, get her to stay. Okay. And so was Riley in um, turning your attention to uh, the weekend before Emma Walker died? Do you remember the day Emma Walker died, or that you found out that she had died? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you remember the weekend that preceded that? Yes, sir. Did you have an occasion on that weekend to spend time with Riley Gall? Yes, sir. Almost all weekend. Okay, with Alex McCarty? Yes, sir. With Isaac Ewers? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, let me turn your attention to that Friday night. Uh, 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 what was, uh, what did you do on Friday? Um, Friday night, uh, I was at my house for pretty much all day after I got out of class. Um, Riley came over at about 6 o'clock, asked me to hold his phone for him for some reason, and I, I believed him. I, I verified with him that he wasn't going to do anything stupid because I knew he'd been struggling with some emotional things. Um, he asked me to text his mom back. His mom texted him. Let him know that he was at my house. Um, and I told him I'd do it. He left for about two hours and returned 
Uh, we got his phone and left immediately. And then later that night, Friday, um, Isaac Ewers and a girl Isaac was with came over. And then... Okay, when, when he left, what did he tell you he was leaving to, to go do? He... Initially, when he handed me his phone, um, he told me that he was doing a scrapping rubber dog, which is why I reassured with him. I said, make sure you're not going to do anything stupid. I'm trusting you. I'm not going to get in your business. I'm not going to be nosy. You're my friend. I trust you. I'll do something if you need me to do it. But just make sure you're safe. And um, So it sounded yeah. odd to you that he was Definitely. saying he was doing a scrap metal job? Definitely. Okay, and uh, at some point though he comes back to the house? Yeah, I went to, get... to, I went to open the door, let him in, and he asked for his phone and immediately left and he even stepped inside the house. Okay, and what, about what time was that? Uh, that was probably anywhere from 9 or 10. Okay. Because he left originally at about 6. Okay, and so when he leaves at 9 or 10, when's the next time you see him? Uh, or hear from him? Not until 12.30 or 1 a.m. in the night. And what do you hear? Uh, via phone or do you, does he show up? Via phone, he calls me and tells me that he had apparently been kidnapped, that story. Um, obviously, I was fed up with it. I, I told him earlier in the day, listen, you're being weird. You're telling me these, these weird things, but I'm trusting you, and I'll do what you ask me to do. And um, so he called me and told me that he had dropped off somewhere on Taswell. And at this point, Isaac Ewers and... Um, came to work at my house, the girl he was with, and I said, okay, well, you have your phone, drop a pin, I'll, I'll come get you right now. What does, does that really mean? Happen what does that mean, drop a pin? Uh, like a location. Okay, did he do that? He did not, um, but he just hung up. He said his phone was about to die, so me and Isaac and Kendall grabbed a baseball bat or two and we got my car, assuming that he was telling the truth, and went to drive and go get him because he told me Tazel Pike, which is very close to my house. Um, and we didn't get 20 yards down my road, which is a dead end road anyway, before he passed us coming back to my house in his car. Okay, and did you, did you guys come back with him yeah. to your house? Okay, and what was he saying? Uh, he said that he explained and he told his, this story that these people had picked him up. Um, he didn't have his car and they dropped him off in somebody's yard and um, that's all I can really call. I, I, I asked a couple questions about it because it, it just seemed odd. I didn't know anybody that would have a problem with him that would kidnap him. But so it wasn't making sense to you? It's not. All right, so eventually, uh, does he end up spending the night Friday night with you? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, how late do you guys stay up? Um, 2, 3 a.m. max. Okay. Um, Isaac and I, Isaac and Kim on me for a while and they left eventually and I knew that something had just happened. I didn't necessarily believe it was what he said, but I knew that something had happened to him that day. So I said, you can go ahead and stay here if you want, man. I know you just went through something. Um, he ended up staying Friday night. And when he stays, where does he sleep? Uh, my cat. And where do you sleep? My bed. Okay. And you have a, so you have a, a be, uh, uh, multiple floors in the home? Yes, sir. Is your bedroom upstairs or downstairs? Uh, the time was upstairs. Okay, so you go upstairs and go to sleep at 3 or whatever in the morning? Yes, sir. Uh, what time do you wake up? Around 11 a.m. Saturday morning? Yes. Uh, when you woke up, was Riley there? No, sir. No. Uh, had he told you or you had any communication uh, with him that morning about no. where he was going or no, what he was sir. doing? He was gone before I woke up. Okay. And so, moving then to uh, the next time that you saw Riley, uh, that morning, obviously, you woke up, you said, at 11. Mm -hmm. Do you recall uh, the next time you saw him? Uh, it was later that afternoon, maybe 4 or 5 p.m., maybe later. Okay. And uh, eventually that night, does he come back? Um, yeah, I think, I think he came over around 4 or 5 p.m. on Saturday. Okay. And um, we were at my house hanging out. Isaac and Alex also came over. Okay. Uh, How's Riley behaving? This is, what's his... he, he was obviously upset. Um, he was very quiet that night. He took this part of this. It was just on his phone. You're, you're tick twirling your hair with your fingers? Yeah. Okay. Head down. He was very quiet that night. 
Did you notice any injuries on him from the night before, from Friday night? No, not necessarily. Okay. But at some point uh, on Saturday night, does he does he leave to go to a convenience store with Alex? Yes. Okay. And who is present back at the house when he when he leaves with Alex? Um, me, Isaac Ewers, and uh, I believe Kendall again. And did, did you read anything into the, the, him going to the store with Alex? When it happened? Yes. I think it, uh, not necessarily. I, we've known Riley was in kind of a dark place, and I just assumed that Alex was going to talk to him for a little bit. Good. And Alex is good to talk to. Alex is the supportive friend in your group? Okay. Yeah. I'd like to think we all are. Okay. But as far as being confrontational with Riley, who would you say in the group is the most confrontational with him? Probably Isaac Ewers. Isaac? And who is the most supportive of him? Um, probably me and Alex together. So uh, he leaves with Alex uh, to go to the store, and do they come back together? Yes, sir. And when they come back, do you have a conversation with Alex about what uh, had happened at the store? Uh, yes, much later in the night after Riley had left. Okay. And Alex discloses some things to you that happened while they went to the store? Yes. Do you all talk about a, what you're going to do as a result of that? Um, somewhat. We didn't really know what to do, so we talked about it, um, but we didn't have a directional path or a plan. Okay. And so that Saturday night, uh, you go to bed, and w what time do you get up Sunday morning? Uh, I woke up probably around 8 or 8.30 Sunday morning and I went to church. Okay. And what happens uh, Sunday? Let's, uh, we'll move, I guess, to the, to the evening hours of Sunday. Do you uh, have a chance to see Riley again that Sunday night? Yes, sir. And what are the circumstances of that? Um, so Sunday night, uh, at the time Westworld was premiering on HBO every night at about 9 p.m. And we'd all get together and watch that. Uh, again, Riley, Alex, and I, we all came over. Uh, they probably arrived around, you know, from 6 to 8 and uh, stayed until about 10 or 11. Okay, and uh, who, who stayed till about 10 or 11? Uh, Riley did. Okay, and so when he left at 11, what was your understanding of what was, where he was going, or what did he tell you he was going? Uh, he was going back to normal college to work on a paper. Okay, and did you all offer alternatives for him to work there, or what? Yeah, I told him if he needed to, he could use my computer, I had a desktop, and a laptop. Um, I, I offered that, he said he needed his, I didn't really think anything of it. Okay, what was his mood before he left at, at 11? Um, he seemed normal. Um, he had been in a, a somewhat of a slump the last couple of days, um, and he wasn't fully out of it. But he, he also wasn't he wasn't as gloomy as he was on Saturday night. Okay, so you've told the jury you're, he's leaving your house at eleven, going back to Maryville. When's the next time you hear from him? Um, probably around midnight or twelve thirty. He calls and asks. Apparently, he finished the paper. I'm, I'm not sure he called and asked if he could come back over and if Isaac and Alex were still there. And um, Would, I told him no. Were they still there? Uh, they were, but they were going to leave shortly, and it was a school night, so I didn't want somebody coming back over again. Okay, so he asked to actually come, and you yes. told him no, he couldn't? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, what else did he t he ask you in that conversation? Um, he asked me something about his paper, uh, about Westward expansion. And he also asked me for his roommate if I knew how to remove fingerprints from a gun. And I responded probably pretty violently. I told him, pardon my language, why the fuck you would ask me something like that? I obviously have no idea. Um, and to not ever ask me something like that again. Did you um, question him about the source of that, did, I mean, or did he offer the, the roommate as a source of that question? He said that the roommate had asked him that, and it was quote unquote freaking him out as well. Um, I thought it was weird, but I figured I'd ask you. Ask you. Um, You're quoting what Riley said to you. Okay. And. Uh, How long did that conversation take? No, more than 10 minutes. And that was voice yes. communication, talking yes. to him? 
what was your concern at, at this point if he uh, just told you he was or asking you how to get fingerprints off a gun? I honestly don't know. Looking back on it, um, did let me ask. Let me put it this way: Did Riley Gall at this point was he aware of what Alex had told you? What happened Saturday night? Uh, I I didn't know that he had a gun in, in his eyes. Um, but you knew. But I knew. Yeah. Okay. And so based on that. Uh, he's asking you to get remove fingerprints. How to move, remove fingerprints from a gun? Did you? What did you do as a result of it? I believe I told Alex and Isaac about it, um, and then I also the next day I, I told uh, Detective Curse about it when he was asking me questions about the night before. Um, but I, I honestly didn't do anything. Okay, and that's 12:30 the night Emma died. Yes, sir. Okay. Sunday night. And when did you learn about Emma's passing? Monday and did you reach out to Riley? I don't recall. I may have sent him a text uh, because I was un unaware of the circumstances of her death. Uh, I may have sent him a text saying, hey, man, are, are you all right? I heard what happened. Um, at the time, I think rumor had gotten around that um, nobody really know how, knew how she died. Um, it was a possible suicide is what I heard. Um, Again, this is all just from word of mouth from students and friends, so I wasn't sure. So I reached out and asked him if he was okay. Okay. But is there some point that you, uh, along with Alex, called the police? Um, we didn't. We did not personally call the police. Um, we actually were all over at the Wise's residence, Emily and Russ Wise. And, um, Emily Wise is the uh, the female friend that you were talking about. Yes, sir. Emily's father. What does he do? He's. Um, I believe he's. Uh, an active administrator at Central High School. Okay. One of the principals there? Yes, sir. And so you went, you all convened at her house for what purpose? Well, so after we had heard of Emma's death, um, a lot of things kind of clicked about stuff that had happened and a lot of the information we had we knew we should have shared, that we possibly should have shared earlier, but we didn't really think that it was necessary, I guess. We didn't know what the gravity of the situation was. And so once we found out about her death, we all convened at the Wise's house, um, both for our own safety and to tell Russ, listen, this is what we know. Um, all this shit has been happening for the last couple of days. What do we do? And then uh, Russ contacted Detective Merritt and he came over and talked to every single one of us. Okay. And of course, we know that you participated in the recovery of the weapon, the firearm, the murder. Yes, sir. Okay. May I approach her? No, what I'm handing has been marked for identification as exhibit number 38. Do you recognize that exhibit? Yes, sir. Are those your initials there? Yes. Because you previously reviewed this doc, this document? Yes, sir. Uh, and what is this document? What does it contain? Uh, the text between me and I and Okay, and that's the weekend, basically through the weekend from yeah. the start of what day? The 18th? The 18th through the 22nd. Okay. Uh, just tr just uh, to turn your attention to on the 18th at uh, 1119, do you uh, do you recall receiving that uh, phone call at 111951? 11, 111951. Uh, yes. uh, and tell the members of the jury what phone number did you receive a text from at 111951? Uh, 1251331521. Okay, and do you know that number? Mm, not at all. Was it in your contacts? Not at all. What does the person text you? Uh, hey, do you know who this is? How do you respond? No. What do they say next? What number is this? And how do you respond? I don't. And then what do they uh, respond? Hello. That comes from the, that 251 yes. number? And then what, how do you respond to that? Uh, I don't have this number saved. Who is this? Okay. And is that the only time that number's ever called you? Yes, sir. Do you ever know who that is? No. Okay. We move this in as Exhibit 38, uh, text communication between Riley Gall and the defendant. Very well. I mean, the uh, witness. Pass witness. Finally approached that, next, that last exhibit. Mr. Gall, you 
they don't understand you directly, uh, Mr. Wall. We've not met that, sir. I'm Leslie Stone. Uh, I represent the golf. This, this is exhibit 38 that you just said about this from. Did I understand you correctly that this is your, this is from your phone? Yeah, I mean, this information that's on this document is from your phone? Yes, sir. Okay. And I noticed here that there was a, a chat deleted here on November the 18th. You know which chat you deleted? Did you see that? Uh, it may have not been from you, rather. Okay. I don't know. I didn't. And then there's another instant message that something's been deleted as well, correct? You see that? Yes, I see. You, you, you wouldn't disagree that that information's been deleted? Yes. You would not disagree? I would not. So, you said you went over to the Wise residence to find a food correctly because you were concerned for your safety? Yes, sir. Right. And, and fast forward a little bit to you, you were with Riley the night he got arrested? Yes, sir. And you, uh, prior to that arrest, you uh, participated in him um, and you and Alex getting a firearm at Seth's house? That night that he was arrested, you and Alex and Riley participated in getting a firearm at, yes, at Seth's? Yes, sir. Okay. And we, you were aware that that firearm may be loaded? Yes, sir. Okay. You knew Riley wouldn't do anything to you? I was pretty sure. Yeah. And he didn't do anything to you? No, sir. And he didn't do anything to uh, Alex? No, sir. And you, you watched him get arrested? Yes, sir. Might as well got arrested. It was kind of made up, though, right? It was very real to me. I understand, but you didn't get charged with anything. No, sir. It was all part of the plan with law enforcement. Yes, sir. Okay. Same thing with Alex. He got arrested, but it was all part of the plan with law enforcement. Yes, sir. And part of that plan with law enforcement was you and Alex, did you meet with law enforcement that morning uh, over here in this building at the sheriff's? Tuesday morning. I, it's, the, the night's kind of blur on me a little bit, but when they gave you all the fob? Yes, sir. Okay. It was probably coming up to Okay. After. Okay. And, and so you and Alex had this fob, correct? Yes, sir. And you know that law enforcement are going to be following you all when you make contact with Riley? And you're communicating in the back seat with law enforcement about where you all are going, what you all are doing. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, as I understood from Alex's testimony, and maybe some of the things that Mr. Allen had said, was that you um, and uh, Alex had went through a transcript of, of, the, of the events. Yes. In, in that, there's that video, we've watched a video. Yeah. Okay, and you've watched a video. And you went through this transcript to make sure it was accurate? Yes. Okay. Do you need some water? Okay. I understand. As part of uh, um, that video that we watched, um, you and Alex were at your house. That, yes. And you've seen that part, right? Yes. And Alex leaves the fob on the table for a minute. Is that correct? Yes. And he goes outside and talks to Riley. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. She just has to get those yeses and noes and things. Um, and when, um, when Alex went out there, he left the fob inside the house. You were kind of aggravated that he left that in there, correct? No. You weren't aggravated? You were like saying something to the effect of, Alex, you left this in here or something like that, talking to yourself? you remember that at all? Uh, not necessarily, but I, we talked about it before and we put it on the table facing a certain place. And Alex went outside and left it on the table to talk to Riley. Yeah. So we don't know what was said in that conversation. Okay. He, I do remember that actually, yes. Yeah. Okay. I remember saying that. He left his thing. He left his thing. He was supposed to have it with him. Right. And he went out and talked to him. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
after you learned of Emma's death and before you knew any of the circumstances of it, I believe you said you did reach out to Riley either by text or call. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, you said you wanted to see if he was okay. Yes. And you didn't think at that time that he had anything to do with Emma's death. No. And that would have been on the 21st of November. Uh, we'll say it to Monday. Monday, yes. Okay. And then on Sunday, uh, which had been the day before that, um, you and Alex and Isaac uh, had a discussion about some intervention with Riley? Uh, yes, that probably would have been Saturday night okay. after Alex told us about the gun. <laughs> so as, as the first time you knew anything about a gun was on Saturday night before Emma's passing? Yes. you ever known Riley to have a gun before that? No, sir. So you've never seen him shoot a gun? No. Don't have any idea what he knows about guns? No. Do you have guns? Uh, I do not. At the time, I did not. You have, you have an assault rifle? Yes, sir. And how old were you in November of 2016? 18. And I think the words that you said about what you and Alice were going to do and Isaac talked about what to do and didn't have a directional path or a plan. I think that's, yeah. did I take we, that down right? We knew some things were going on and something should be done, but we did not approach the situation. Okay. And that's what Isaac normally confronts Riley. Yes, sir. Okay. And you and Alex normally comfort or console or counsel Riley. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And you and Alex normally comfort or console or counsel Riley. Yes. Is that kind of the dynamic in the relationships? You, you didn't call law enforcement? No, sir. Did you know Jim and Amy Walker, Riley's grandparents? No, sir. Did you know Seth Donnelly? Yes, sir. And, and how did you know Seth? I've been over to his house a few times with Riley. Okay. You have his number? Uh, I believe so. You knew where he lived? Yes, sir. You didn't tell Seth about Riley having a gun? No, sir. And I think you said Riley was in a, in a black place, a dark, dark place? Yes. Okay. And it was on the night of November 20th, that Sunday, that Riley called you to come over and you said no? Yes, And it's your testimony that on um, that Sunday night, this conversation occurred about fingerprints on the gun. Yes, sir. And that's when you told Riley you knew he had a gun? I did not tell him that. But on that Sunday night, you didn't contact Seth Donnellan? No, sir. You didn't contact law enforcement? Why not? Um, honestly, I don't know. It was, it was probably irresponsible, but I didn't, uh, didn't want to put myself in any danger, and I didn't. Uh, Do you think you were intentional and in, in not? Telling other people or alerting other people about that? No, um, it honestly wasn't my business. 
the fact that your friend has been in a depressed state threatening suicide and you know he has a firearm is none of your business? It is between me and him, but I don't want to reach out to somebody that's going to get him in trouble for that because that wouldn't help his situation at all. Um, and he seemed of sound mind, and I talked to him about what he was going through multiple times, and he seemed to be okay. And that was my main concern. Even though he was in a, a black, a dark place. He was going through a breakup. Wasn't it Friday night that Fulton had simply played football? I'm not sure. I believe so. But I didn't follow high school football after I left. But I'm talking about, so in November of 2016, you didn't follow Central High School? Not really. What time was it you said Riley was, was at your house on Friday? Uh, he came over a total of three times. He arrived probably around 5 or 6 and then left around 5 or 6 and then left around 6 or 7. After he said he'd been kidnapped. Yes, You said you, you would recognize Emma Walker on the street? You've seen a lot of social media uh, around these events uh, about Emma Walker. Uh, around what events? The events of her passing. Yes. Did you watch Riley play football soon? show you on the monitor. Is that the picture we just introduced as Exhibit 39? Yes. Did you graduate with Riley? Yes, sir. 
Do you know when that picture was taken? No, sir. That's all questions. Anything further, Mr. No, Your Honor. You can sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.